Trump's hold on the GOP is that he was the first to appeal only to emotion and not to reason. Yeah. Complete surrender to tribalism via emotion for power worship. Trump's facts and truth. Yes. Is this a postmodern view? Well, I don't know if it's postmodern because I, I think pre-postmodernism, this has been used effectively. It's been used effectively by authoritarians for generations. Uh, you know, th this methodology, this way, this way of, um, of seeing it, the way of, of manipulating people, the way of encouraging tribalism and getting people riled up around this kind of agenda is not new. Uh, you know, there's a certain intellectual strand of thought that, that is called postmodernism that, that takes these ideas and, you know, grounds them in a particular philosophy, pretty weak philosophy, pretty lame philosophy, but a philosophy nonetheless. But this train of ideas has been around for a long time. Authoritarians have had it. Pragmatism has been around for a long time. Tribalism has been around for a long time. The use of tribalism via emotion has been around for a long time. So I, I don't think that this is some new, this is postmodernism on the right, because I, I don't think what motivates Trump is some postmodern ideology. I think what motivates Trump is pragmatism. Pragmatism at its all out. Now, is there a difference between pragmatism, pure pragmatism, and postmodernism? In the view of truth, no. In the end, there isn't. But pragmatism far it, it comes earlier philosophically than postmodernism. Pragmatism, William James and, and, um, and uh, the other pragmatist philosophers were late 19th century, early 20th century philosophers, whereas postmodernism is a phenomenon of the mid-20th century as an intellectual movement. So you can come to very similar conclusions based on very different philosophical ideas, and even though the conclusions about truth might be similar, the way they're applied and the way they manifest is very different. But yes, what we live in today is an era in which significant portions of both the right and the left don't believe in truth, don't believe in reality, don't believe in principles, and where everything is, is mushy and flexible. And, it, and it's why, in the end, Trump cannot be successful. He lost. It's because he doesn't have principles. And imagine a, a true authoritarian it, it cannot be a, a pure pragmatist. A pure authoritarian cannot be a pure pragmatist. Right. Now, pragmatism and being pragmatic are bad things. Being pragmatic is not a good thing. Being practical is good. The practical and the moral are what objectivism stand behind. Being pragmatic is, a, is by definition a banding principle. That's what it means. And I know there's confusion when Americans talk about this. But what pragmatic means is abandoning principle. And Trump was the ultimate pragmatist. And he acted pragmatically. I mean, that's what he is. And unfortunately, many businessmen are pragmatists because the only principles they've been taught are the principles of altruism, which they reject. And they associate principles with altruism and therefore, the only alternative they know is being pragmatic, which is abandoning principles. And unfortunately, many businessmen are pragmatic. Pragmatic and practical are not synonyms, are not synonyms. It is a massive mistake, intellectually, conceptually, to treat those two as synonyms. And certainly, Ayn Rand would be horrified by that idea. Ayn Rand, who's Concepts were important to her. Definitions, words were important. And pragmatic is a very different concept than practical. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, 
cynicism and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>